Are you ready online? Everything is okay? Cool. Well, thank you so much for being here again with us. It's been a week since the last conference that we had in Strasbourg, where we raised deeply concerns about what was planned to be happening in the parliament, specifically the decision of the Bureau of the leaders of the parliament to strip pretty much the staff, our assistants, and ourselves as directly elected by the, by the European citizens. All these people to be stripped of their fundamental rights. The right to work, the right to decide as they want to do with their own bodies. And nevertheless, in our case, the right that we have and the parliamentary immunities that we have as elected by the people not to be influenced in any way when we do our mandate. So each one of us who are present here, and many of us are at home supporting us, you know, we have this, this pandemic situation, you know, a lot of us because of all these measures are at home, but they are all behind us. So we are again here today to express exactly what happened. Each one of us is going to present from their perspective what happened during this, uh, this week in the parliament and what is the plan uh, going forward. I have to my left, uh, my colleague from Italy, uh, Francesca Donata, my colleague from Germany, Christina Anderson, another colleague from the similar group, and on to my right, I have my colleague from Croatia, I.E. Ivan Sinchik, right? And another colleague from Croatia, Kulacic, right? Do I pronounce it correct? Uh, right now, not. <laughs> Kolakusic. Kolakusic, I know, it's tough with all these names. But the funny part is we are on the same side from different countries and we support exactly the same thing. The respect for fundamental rights of every person working for the parliament and of every European citizens. So without further ado, I would like my colleague, Christina Anderson, to have the opening. Yes, hello. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for all of you that went to great lengths to express your support to us in an overwhelmingly huge amount of emails. Thank you so much. We're doing this for you. All through Europe, governments have gone to great lengths to get people vaccinated. We were promised the vaccinations will be a game changer and it will restore our freedom. Turns out none of that was true. It does not render you immune. You can still contract the virus and you can still be infectious. The only thing this vaccine did for sure was to spill billions and billions of dollars in the pockets of pharmaceutical companies. I voted against the digital green certificate back in April. Unfortunately, it was adopted nonetheless. And this just goes to show there is only a minority of MEPs who truly stand for European values. The majority of MEPs, for whatever reasons unbeknown to me, obviously support oppression of the people while claiming shamelessly to do it for the people's own good. But it is not the goal that renders a system oppressive. It is always the methods by which the goal is pursued. Whenever a government claims to have the people's interest at heart, you need to think again. In the entire history of mankind, there has never been a political elite sincerely concerned about the well-being of regular people. What makes any of us think that it is different now? If the Age of Enlightenment has brought forth anything, then certainly this. Never take anything any government tells you at face value. Always question everything any government does or does not do. Always look for ulterior motives and always ask, cui bono, who benefits? Whenever a political elite pushes an agenda this hard and resorts to extortion and manipulation to get their way, you can almost always be sure your benefit is definitely not what they had at heart. As far as I'm concerned, I will not be vaccinated with anything that has not been properly vetted and tested and has shown no sound scientific evidence that the benefits outweigh the disease itself and possible long-term side effects, which to this day, we don't know anything 
about. I will not be reduced to a mere guinea pig by getting vaccinated with an experimental drug. And I will most assuredly not get vaccinated because my government tells me to and promises in return I will be granted freedom. Let's be clear about one thing. No one grants me freedom, for I am a free person. So I dare the European Commission and the German government throw me in jail, lock me up and throw away the key for all I care. But you will never be able to coerce me into being vaccinated if I, the free citizen that I am, choose not to be vaccinated. Lastly, I would like you to think about this one. The compulsory use of the digital green certificate undermines everything that Europeans stand for. It violates constitutionally guaranteed fundamental rights and it constitutes the first step towards the insufferable Chinese social credit system. I will never stand for this. I will never put up with this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. I agree with uh, uh, almost all the things that you said, but what I want to add here is that uh, what uh, we are discussing today and what we should be worried about is not a matter of being in favor of against the COVID vaccines. The issue today is whether we are supposed to leave European citizens without a safeguard of our fundamental rights and precisely the right to have a job, to be treated equally by institutions without any discrimination, and the right to protect the integrity of their bodies, choosing in complete freedom whether to accept or not a sanitary treatment. All citizens must be free to choose what risks they want to run for their own, own health and what risks they are not ready to face. The mandate for COVID certificates to work is just an extortion of consent to a personal choice about one's own body, and it violates human rights as enshrined in the European chart and in many EU laws. We are here standing to call for the respect of European fundamental values and freedom, for non-discrimination and for human dignity. If we accept the mandate of a digital certificate for the exercise of our fundamental rights, we won't be entitled of those rights, just as human beings, as longer, but will be subjected to some authority's permission to live our lives in liberty. Is this the model of society we want to live in? Is this the Europe that we were elected to represent? Are human rights optional according to our fundamental values? My answer is no, no, no. We received our mandate directly by European citizens and we owe total respect to them above any other private or public subject. No one, no intermediate body is legitimated to prevent us from exercising our mandate unless we commit a crime and the whole parliament decides to revoke our dip diplomatic immunity that the treaties grant us. The parliament bureau can't violate our MEP's guarantees for any reason and it can't rip off EU workers' rights as well. We'll defend our rights and your rights by all means, from legal to political to physical. It's no more time for fear and hesitance. Today, it's high time to be courageous and united. That's what we are. Thank you. Ivan. Thank you very much, my dear colleagues. Yet again, this week, we are here to say no to discrimination and no to segregation. We are here to defend fundamental and human rights. I will say it again. Digital green certificate is illogical, it's non-scientific, and it is useless for solving this crisis. On the contrary, it gives people carrying it a false sense of security that they cannot be infected themselves or infect others.
More and more scientific data and everyday experience confirms that. DGC is not here about our health. It is about politics, it is about rights. All around Europe, policies, policies have been installed that have stolen people's normal life. Governments are basically blackmailing the citizens more and more. Croatian government openly admits that DGCs are just additional pressure upon those who do not want to take the vaccine for whatever reason. You cannot get your normal life unless you get the DGC. You cannot have your freedoms unless you get the DGC. On the other hand, healthy people are being deprived of their freedoms and constitutional rights. They are not going to stop, my friends. They must be stopped. This is not going to stop by itself. It will spread. It will come to your door. It will blackmail your life. Every piece of your life. This is why we continuously say no. We have our unalienable rights. That means that nobody can take them from us. We have international documents such as Oviedo Convention, Nuremberg Code, resolutions of councils of Europe of various type, bioethics conventions, etc. Do these documents mean nothing anymore? Haven't they been, at least some of them, ratified in our parliaments? Ha hasn't that been a golden standard for decades? Yes, it has. What about national constitutions? Do they have no more values? Yes, they do. And we even have some constitutional courts ruling in Europe that show that this is all wrong and that freedoms cannot be taken away and that the fines that were charged upon the citizens who just wanted to be free from the mandatory nature of all of this, that these fines have to be removed and the money must be returned to these citizens who were fined. These documents and standards I have mentioned are still in power. They have not been removed from power simply because some government puts pressure on some different policy. They are still in power and they will be in power. And we will fight for these standards and documents and we call upon them. Another standard that we have is that the citizens of Europe have a right to choose their own therapy for whatever disease, including COVID-19. They have a right in consultations with their doctor, with their family physician, to make best choices for their health. Either it is a vaccine of any type or a cure or whatever gets invented. It's your own choice as a patient. No government can coerce you on a certain type of medical product. Digital Green Certificate is a European problem. It is not just a problem of Italy or Lithuania or European Parliament now, European Parliament building. It's a European problem. It is a common problem. It is not a problem of one European country. It is a problem of all of us. This will not be limited, as I say, to one country. This will be coming to your door. And the sooner we say no, the stronger the message that we sent. I call upon all the free peoples of Europe to resist the DGC wherever they can. Fight for your rights. Thank you. Thank you. You know, we were elected by the people. That's what the treaty says. But we should not forget that we are elected here for the people. We should have the best interests of people in mind, because that is the reason why they elected us here in the European Parliament. All these leaders of the European Parliament, they like to praise themselves every time when they go in a press conference to say that this is the most democratic institution of the European Union. The question to them is, is really so? Have you told these people in the parliament, when you decided to strip their fundamental rights, 
why you have done it. You see, we have all these treaties, as my colleague said, that no medical treatment should be imposed on you unless you decide about it freely and under informed consent. Now, clearly what they do right now to condition the access in the parliament to have this green certificate is violating this freedom of people to choose what do they want to be back vaccinated with or tested with. But there's the other aspect. And the question that I address not only to you in the parliament, but to every European citizen to ask your own government, were you properly informed about what is going on? Because we had a lot of debates at the beginning of this year in the parliament where we demanded full access to the contracts signed between these companies that produce the vaccines and the European Union. And I quote from an article in Euroactive who says the following in an article from January 22nd, 2021, that says the following. The contract signed between pharmaceutical company and the European Commission in November of 2020 was made available to MAPS on Tuesday in a redacted format after the company agreed to open the contract up to scrutiny. Say what? Say what? So you're imposing a medical product on the European citizens without them knowing what's in these contracts? Not only them knowing, but us, we don't know. So after a lot of pressure in the parliament, as the article says, these contracts were disclosed to us and to the public. And I want to show you some of those pages. And you tell me if this is okay for the European citizens to be exposed to this situation where they cannot come to work, they cannot enter a store, they cannot go with their kids to schools, where they cannot freely move from one country to another, unless in one situation is vaccinated with one of these products. So these are the contracts that were disclosed by the commission with the approval of the company. This is unheard of. And I will just show you the pages. These are the pages. You see? They call this transparency these days. So this is the fundamental principle, right? Of democracy. I'm asking you guys, is this transparency? Do you see anything? Because we don't. European citizens' money has been given by Ursula von der Leyen to these companies. What happened with those money? What are they? Why are they open with the people and fully transparent? So we all know what is going on. The difference between tyranny and democracy is very simple. When the government knows everything about you, that's tyranny. I know how it is to live in tyranny. When you know everything about your government, that's democracy. So this is where we are right now, praising this institution. It's the most democratic institution in the European Union. And even us as MEPS, as directly elected by the people, for the people, we haven't been able to see in these contracts. So as we said last week, we are here for you and we will fight for you. I know many of you are struggling all across Europe and many of you working for the European institutions are struggling right now. But look, as a former US president said, freedom, liberty is one generation away from extinction. We live that type of time right now. And it's our duty and our call to fight for liberty. Thank you.